Alrighty, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Wes Purvis, a product manager at MIST, and I'm going to talk about 11, 11AX. So, uh, why not uh, pass around our AP43, which is our uh, 11AX AP. And I also have some, uh, some antennas to pass around as well. So here's an internal antenna, and here's an external antenna board. Notice we've moved our antennas to the side, no longer on the front. Uh, we received some positive feedback on that, a little more uh, compact, allows you to uh, mount the antennas. So uh, AP4311 AX, we, we announced uh, you know, sort of in June, and the AP has been shipping just, it has exceeded our expectations. Uh, just people want 11 AX, I guess. Um, so we're extremely happy with how, um, you know, with, with the feedback that we've received so far on the AP43. Um, so just a little bit about the AP, and then I'll move into what we're seeing uh, with, uh, with 11 AX in general. So the AP uh, uh, new to MIST is, is, is dual five gigahertz capability. Right, so we have a software selectable radio where we can uh, uh, you know, select between 2.4 and 5 gig band. Um, we also have a third scanning radio within the AP. That's not new. We've had that you know, since the AP41. But uh, what is new is we have we've certified that AP for transmit, which opens a number of interesting possibilities in the future. Um, you know, around synthetic testing without requiring the uh, you know without requiring an overlay network. Um, so we're we're intrigued with the possibilities that uh, that we have with that. Um, we have included MGIG in the AP. You know, this is really kind of table stakes now. Um, we don't think that you'll actually need MGIG. Um, I don't see gigabit Ethernet uh, as a bottleneck for Wi-Fi, um, but we have an MGIG port up to two and a half gig, uh, multi gigabit. Uh, if you want it, you know it's it's really there for marketing purposes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but it, you know, there in in the future, who knows? Maybe there will be there will be value from it. <laughs> um, from a from a Bluetooth perspective, as you you know look at the uh, the antennas that get passed around, you'll see that we still have our virtual Bluetooth low energy antenna array, uh, and in fact, it's it's now our second our second generation of that antenna. We've uh, tweaked it slightly, um, as well as we've upgraded to Bluetooth five. Dot o on the AP. Uh, we're expecting that to be software upgradable to 5.1 as well. What I'm most excited about, I guess, second most exciting thing on the AP for me besides dual five is all the sensors. Um, so we, we have a, um, a temperature sensor on the AP. We have a humidity sensor on the AP. We have a pressure sensor. Um, pressure sensor, a in, couple interesting use cases, uh, one around location. Um, so being able to tell, all right, is one AP on a different floor than another AP, and so that's for um, you know floor location, determine you know placing the client on the right uh, on the correct floor. Um, we also have a tilt sensor, and the tilt sensor uh, I think is pretty cool because uh, so location use cases is this AP uh, mounted on the ceiling? Is it uh, is somebody testing location with the AP face up on the on the table and their location is not working very well? Um, I think probably more realistic is. Uh, is the AP mounted on the ceiling but off by maybe a couple degrees, and that's impacting location. So the location engine, you know, could be able to take that into, you know, into consideration as it's uh, doing its location calculations. Or how about with, uh, with, with Wi-Fi, right? You mount the AP on the wall. Should RRM uh, treat that AP differently? Should it configure it differently? Is there any thought to adding something so that you know the rotation, the orientation on the map? Yeah, there, there has. It's difficult with magnetic interference. Yeah, it, but it's not accurate enough. That's we went down that. We path. tried that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. And, well, you could. I was going to say you could change the, uh, the light of the LED to just let the installer know that they installed it properly, like in the right orientation or tilt is nice. No, that's that's actually a good that idea when the AP is powered up. Idea. It would, it would mean that he has to connect it to the switch, right? Yeah. It's not always the case. Yeah, but, but I mean, they're gonna, you're going to, yeah, hopefully you'll validate. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time, yeah. the installers validate, right? <laughs> From Brian Ward, are the environmental <laughs> sensors uh, NIST calibrated? Yeah. yeah. And ISD calibrated? Are, are the environmental uh, sensors uh, calibrated? I would say no, and probably not. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we've seen, we've seen, you know, decent accuracy. Um, you know, enough to tell, hey, this, the, the room is 68 degrees. Cool. What My were the apologies. use cases or requests around those specific sensors? Um, so uh, around temperature, humidity, um, you know, customers 
have overlay networks with, with temperature and humidity sensors. So just being able to reduce their footprint of, of devices they have to deploy. Do you have a way of uh, graphing this? Or I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the MIST. Yes, uh, uh, we will. <laughs> uh, the, I mean, all the data will be available in the cloud. Um, uh, you know, once we plumb it up from the AP, yeah. All right, and, and we continue with the IoT port, uh, just like we have on the AP41, <laughs> which has, uh, you know, digital analog connectors uh, on the AP for. What, know, what are some use cases, or if any, that you're seeing customers use that port for? Because yeah. I know that goes back a couple AP generations, and yeah. I, I always have customers saying, hey, you know, we see this IoT port, what do we do with it? Yeah. It's it's definitely not used by every every customer. Um, you know, one 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 use case that we that we have in production is um, is a hospital um, using the IoT port to lock and unlock doors based on location of patients. Okay. You're tagging them a BLE tag. Yeah. So the patient's wearing uh, either you know a wristband with BLE or sewn into their, their gown, um, and as they walk near an exterior door, the door locks. locks. Okay. But if they're if they're walking with a staff member. The door remains unlocked. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So uh, I love hardware as, next, as much as the next guy, um, but uh, uh, for MIST, it's all about the software. Right? And so let's talk about how um, this AP and how um, 11AX uh, you know, is more, it's more of a data source for us. Right? And so for MIST, it's all about the data. If you don't have the data, you can't do anything. Um, so this AP and 11AX allows us to do uh, more than we've ever been able to do before, um, specifically around RRM. There's, there's 11AX enables um, a number of new vectors um, to, you know, to have a better RF experience. Um, so one, you know, new to MIST is, is dual 5 gig, right? So we need an algorithm that, um, that does, you know, 2.4 cancellation. So we'll, we'll take in, uh, into consideration, you know, is there enough 2.4 coverage? Um, you know, we'll never do more than 50% of the radios in a particular, uh, in a particular location. Um, so is there enough 2.4 coverage? Is there enough 5 gigahertz capacity? Does it make sense to actually change that radio into dual 5 mode? Um, this will not only work with AP43, but also with AP41, where, um, you know, AP41 doesn't support dual 5, but we will turn off the 2.4 radio uh, if there's too much 2.4 coverage. Can you manually configure the AP to be a dual 5 gig AP? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, sticky client mitigation. This is a um, you know a, another feature that uh, has been requested by customers. Um, you know I, I know that there's mixed feelings. I certainly have mixed feelings on sticky client mitigation, um, but uh, there is there is a real use case for it. And um, you, you know we'll do things like um, you know once once the client fails fails coverage, uh, we'll say all right, are there any candidate APs to move that client to? Right. So we want we want the we want the client to have a uh, candidate AP that's at least 6 dB better. Um, so we're taking that into consideration um, you know, when, when we're doing our sticky client mitigation. You actually use 11V to steer the client somewhere or you just clip them? Uh, we, uh, we just clip them in this case because most clients are not uh, supporting 11V. Okay. But uh, that, is, that is an area that we'll look to enhance. And then uh, BSS coloring. Um, so you know, we're all probably familiar with CCC, co-channel contention. Um, it's been uh, one of the bedrock things that RRM has tried to optimize for years. Um, we have a new, so, uh, new CCC. We have co-color contention. And so that's a new, um, a, a new vector for RRM to try to optimize and minimize. Right? So um, I, what I care about is, do I have interference within my same color? Right? I, I also probably should worry about my adjacent color interference, but mostly I'm going to care about my co-color my co uh, interference and how I'm assigning colors. Uh, so this is just a, a new area for RRM to take a look at uh, and, and optimize for to improve user experience. And uh, th this is some, some 11AX testing that we've done. Um, so a couple, uh, a couple weeks ago, we were with a customer um, who you know wanted to see? Hey, is is OFDMA actually um, doing what we think it does? So, uh, OFDMA is is definitely is, is the most highly anticipated feature of 11AX. If we go back to 11AC, the most highly anticipated feature was multi-user MIMO, and uh, you know another multi-user technique for Wi-Fi. Um, you know we're extremely excited about it, but it didn't really pan out in the wor real world. It it worked in the lab. 
um, but once you got in the real world, there, there just seemed to be too many variables um, to really make it actually function, uh, as well as client support. So the point of this testing was, hey, what, what, is, you know, what is OFDMA's behavior? Um, is, is it going to follow the same fate as multi-user MIMO, where you, know, you have to kind of fiddle to get, to get it working? Um, and so you know, as you guys were walking in, on the screen we had uh, you know, uh, our AP43 and a couple clients connected to it, and we're doing some, some iPerf tests. And um, you know, the point is, what we've observed so far is OFDMA kind of just works. You don't have to do, you know, there's not a lot of effort to make it work. Um, client positioning is not terribly important. Um, it just kind of works. So that's, that's what's encouraging. Um, you know, how that pans out in the real world, I don't know. Um, I think that it's going to, um, I, I think that it's going to be beneficial, um, you know, based, based on the testing that we've seen. So what you're looking at here is um, an OFDMA waveform. And we have two clients here. Um, one client has been allocated uh, half the channel, 106 resource units. The other client has been allocated the other half the channel, the other 106 resource units. Um, and if you want to um, you know, validate, hey, is, is OFDMA actually working? You have a, a Wi-Fi 6 AP and a uh, you know, Wi-Fi 6 clients. You can, you can pretty easily do a PCAP. Um, and the frame that you want to look for are, you know, are these OFDMA trigger frames. Uh, frame control uh, is 2400. Uh, makes it pretty easy to, to filter on. And so in this case, we have four users um, being scheduled for OFDMA. Uh, and this, this last user has been allocated a quarter of the channel or 52 resource units. So how does the allocation work? Is that the AP allocating the resource unit? Does it take into account what the client is advertising? Or how does that work? Right, yeah, so the, the client has to be capable, yeah. right? Um, the client actually tells what's tells the AP what it's capable of okay. um, from, a, from an allocation standpoint uh, upon association. Uh, and then, so the AP has a, you know, a table of that and then decides to, um, based on client capability and the um, frames that have been buffered uh, in the downlink direction, uh, in the uplink client kind of says, hey, I have, you know, I have some pending traffic. Um, and so that's how the AP ultimately decides um, that I'm going to schedule OFDMA for this. And this client is going to get, you know, uh, uh, you know, 52 resource units, or it's going to get uh, 106 resource units. So, what if you're adding a third device? Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, this is four, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. You have four, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So it's it's all based on uh, it's it's what the AP decides and based on the traffic needs of the client. Okay. So that PCAP doesn't match that spec. Anymore. No, it doesn't. Okay. No. <laughs> no. Wait a minute. I'm missing. Sorry. Sorry. But you're, only showing, but you're only showing one client's worth of. Tone where the resource right because right? yeah if I if I if you, know, you expanded those, those each one's going to have a different yep. potentially different um, resource unit yeah I think they're I think they're actually all all allocated fifty two can't do that too resource. Much. <laughs> sorry <laughs> this one's this is more exciting than showing uh, than showing two clients so uh, is it something that you uh, configure in the um, in the firmware or is it something that's at no, the so chipset level? Yeah, so Mist, uh, Mist, you just uh, you plug in the AP. Wi-Fi six is enabled. OFDMA is enabled. Okay. Um, we have a we have an option to you know disable Wi-Fi six because there are client interop issues. Um, yeah. Really, on, the only one is Intel, but uh, a small one. There's a lot of Intel clients <laughs> out there. Um, so. Uh, yeah, it just kind of on. It just kind of works. Um, we're shipping firmware that um, you know has all these features turned on, right? You don't. It's you're not going to wait three months for this firmware. It's already shipping. Uh, yep. So did Marvis detect that Intel clients had the interop issue when it was happening? <laughs> well, no, the, the problem. The, the problem. Honestly, the problem is mm -hmm. the the clients. Intel clients don't even see the SSID. It's the AG element part. Yeah, of Yeah, right? they they told they don't even probe. Um, so we don't know they're tr trying to connect. Okay. So that's a blind spot because they don't try to connect. Mm -hmm. So maybe no Intel clients have connected today, and they did connect yesterday before yeah. you installed. I mean, it seems like honestly, it's there well, if, be some so correlation there that if, Marvis should pick up on. If it's a if it's a brand new network, we're not going to know. If it's a if it's a transition, you go from AP forty one to AP forty three. Yeah. We'll detect it with an, uh, with anomaly detection. Okay, yeah. great. 